Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika and today is the day of my eyeshadow palette collection video. I, I promised you I would round off the month of August in which I talked about nothing but eyeshadow palettes with my palette collection and that is today. The day has finally come. So before we get into the actual palettes, I always feel these videos need a bit of a, an announcement you could say, so let me just get to it. I am someone who likes to split out the clutters and collection videos. So a lot of people were asking me in my eyeshadow palette declutter video in March, like, can you please show us everything? And that is going to be this video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my eyeshadow palette collection. I will be going through my storage. I will be showing you all of the palettes I have, and I will be swatching some of my favorite shades as we go along because who doesn't love a good swatch? I won't be able to swatch the entire palette because then we would be here forever because I have quite a few eyeshadow palettes, as you will see in a minute. And um, But if you do care to see more in-depth content with like full swatches and looks that I've done with a lot of these palettes, I would like to refer you to reviews that I've done with these and those can be found over on my blog or also in on this channel where I sort of group 10 palettes together and then review them in my 10 palette reviews. So I'll make sure to link everything down below so you can find those in case you're interested. I will be organizing this video by brand and I do own over 200 eyeshadow palettes. So I know that a lot of people find that very excessive. If that's you, then I do apologize if you think it's way too much for one person. Eyeshadow palettes are my favorite thing and I don't think I could have filled an entire month of content if it wasn't for the fact that I have just such a sheer amount of eyeshadow palettes here. But that does mean, of course, that I have some older palettes that perhaps look very lightly used. And that's because I rotate a lot through my palettes because I try to get use out of every single one, save for the ones that I still need to test out for videos. I have used every single shade and there are currently 10 to 15 eyeshadow palettes in my collection that I'm still testing out. So that means that of the over 200 of these, like a, a good solid 200 of them, I've used every single shade that's in the palette. But that's of course also the reason why you're not gonna see a lot of pan. I tend to use a, a very light hand when I'm using my shadows. So I try to keep everything nice and clean and stored away in a dark place. And I find that that way I can keep my eyeshadows in really good condition for a very long time. As I mentioned, some of these palettes are quite old. Since I'm the only person using that, uh, I have no issue um, still putting things on my face. If things don't smell funny or look funny, I have no issues using things. So if you find that problematic as well, then I do apologize, but that's the way this is going to go down. So yeah, those I think are all of the things I wanted to say before we got into this video. So let's just get started. Let's have a look at my eyeshadow palette collection. So to really quickly show you my storage, I keep all of my makeup in a four drawer unit from Ikea. It's called the Malm drawer set, so I'll make sure to put that in the description box. And I keep a lot of my makeup in these little acrylic organizers from Ikea. They're from the God Morgan line. And in this first drawer, I keep sort of odd sized palettes and things that are a bit more affordable. So this has like really small palettes, really big palettes, and then this is sort of like my drugstore, more affordable stuff over here. And then in dr this drawer, which is one drawer down, I keep sort of like my uh, Urban Decay stuff over on this side. I have like all of my Too Faced and Anastasia, Zoeva, Lorac, like that's all around the same size. So I keep it in the same spot. And then over here, again, I've got some like different sizes and I've got my indie stuff in the back. So that's what we're going to go through right now. So let's get started with Juvia's Place. And Juvia's Place is one of my favorite brands and... The Magic and the Tribe, I've mentioned these a bunch of times. These are my favorites. The Tribe in particular, because it has those really lovely greens and those two duochrome shimmers in the middle. The Magic, I also love. This palette has two rows of warm tones and then two rows of cool tones. And the cool tones is where it's at for me. I especially like this shade and this shade. The mattes in this palette are not the best, especially these colorful ones. Um, but I find that if you build them up, they are quite easy to work with. And Juvia's Place just excels at shimmers over mattes, I find. Then my most recent pick uh, from Juvia's Place has been the Violets. Uh, this is a really cute purpley palette. I find these two shades actually to be 
quite similar, so let me swatch these two next to the ones from the Magic, because I feel that they may have similar vibes. Another one that I love by Juvia's is the Nomad. This has a really lovely grungy color story. It's got these really lovely like cocky greens and this baby poop brown shade. These are just really lovely, and if you find Meld Gemini to be quite expensive, I think this is quite a good alternative to try. The Zulu then is their first rainbow palette that they came out with, and I think this is quite handy because it does have two neutrals in case uh, these kind of shades make you a bit nervous. I really like the purple and that aqua shade. Those are the standout shades for me in this palette for sure. And then the most, one, another more recent palette that I bought is the Warrior 3 by Juvius. This is another rainbow palette, and I feel that these two shimmers are cool toned whereas the rest of the palette is quite warm, so I feel those don't really go together. The Festival, I think, is a palette that is quite outspoken, quite out there, and also very unique. It is a pretty confusing color story, I have to say, but these three are quite like bright neons on me. These two work as neutral transitions, and then you just have a really nice pop of blue, and also this shimmering white. Those two shades are really, really pretty. Another really good uh, Juvia's Place palette, but I think that it's being discontinued, is the Saharan 2. This is currently only available as part of a bundle, I believe. This has a really stunning matte. This matte, this is one of the best mattes that Juvia's Place has ever done. And this blue and this like minty shade. I'm not a fan of warm tones, but Juvia's Place makes some really pretty warm tone palettes. Speaking of a pretty warm tone palette by Juvia's would be the Saharan like the first one they came out with. This is a bit more neutral than the Saharan 2. You get a copper in here, a really nice like cranberry shade, you get a rose gold, but this matte over here and this like greeny shimmer um, make for make this palette just a little bit more unique. Then we have the deuce lying here in the middle. This is a great more like pastel -y, kind of softer palette from Juvia's. I especially like this shade here and also that pinky purpley shade in the middle. These are really stunning shades. Um, and this is, again, uh, really pretty, especially if you have fair skin. And then we have a couple of palettes left that I like because it's Juvia's Place, but are, they aren't my favorite. The Afrique by Juvia's is really pretty, but the blue background kind of throws me off, and it doesn't really make for a very cohesive color story, I thought at first. But the greens and the yellows go perfectly together, the blue and the purple, you get some warm tone neutrals. The same goes for the Nubian 2. This is a really pretty neutral palette with a pop of more jewel tone, like especially this green here, this blue and this purple, I really like. It's just that I don't really reach for this a whole lot because I feel I have shades like this that I like just as much in other parts of my collection. And then last but not least, the Masquerade. This has two rows of colors and two rows of neutrals. Really stunning palette, lovely quality, and I especially like this shade here, but I feel that the colorful shades are quite cool toned and then the neutral shades are quite warm toned in comparison, so I feel they don't really go together. And I thought we could keep going with some affordable stuff at first, so this is the Jaclyn, Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Vault. Um, I have no issues with these palettes, as in quality. Some people don't like these. Um, this is my favorite of the four. This is the Dark Magic. And the Dark Magic is like a cool toned, smoky eye, but with some color. So you do get a teal in here that's really nice, and I also really like that taupey shade that's in here. This is the Armed and Gorgeous, which is one of the two warm tone palettes you get in here. And this was lovely quality. I especially like that goldy shade that's in here. I'm not a huge fan of golds, but if they are this like dirty golden shade, I do like them. And then we have Bling Boss, which is purples, but not as purple as I'd like. And then last but not least, my least favorite would be the Ring the Alarm. This is just like warm tones. It does have a really interesting red shade though. So let me swatch bomb ass because that is pretty. This is my little Kaleidos family. These are the five Futurism palettes that were out when I bought them. They've, they're coming out with two new ones and they look stunning. But the Futurism one, two, three, and four, uh, four and five are really lovely palettes. I do have to say though that as much hype as these palettes have been getting, I found that the mattes in these were a little bit more difficult to work with. The sci-fi green is uh, very often des uh, described as a dupe for Melt Gemini, but I feel that the Melt Gemini has more green in the shimmer options you get, but especially this shade here is really lovely. 
The Cyber Bronze is my least favorite of the three because it is more neutral tone. However, that silver and also that red, those are really pretty. And then the Astro Pink is one of my favorites and I hope, if you know anything about my taste, then you know I love teals, so let me swatch that. And also this Icy Lavender shade is really pretty. I wore this again the other day and I loved it. And then we have the VR Neon, and these mattes are pretty okay for bright mattes. I have other bright mattes in my collection that I prefer, but this shimmering pink shade. And then my favorite one of the five is the Electro Turquoise. This combination of like greeny teals, turquoisey shades with the orange is very unexpected, but it works really well. Uh, but again, the shimmers is where it is at, but this, this shade is good too. Um, so let me show you that. Moving on then to ColourPop, and let's start with something that's very recent to me, and that would be the Flutterby. And this is a really pretty cool tone mauve palette. I haven't put this on my face yet, uh, that's how new it is to me. Also new is the Going Coconuts. This is another neutral palette. A lot of people are saying this is a little bit more um, cool toned, but I feel that the cool tones is really like over here and not so much in the rest. So I will again have to test this out to see how I feel. And then the last one I got is Making Mauves. Um, this is also mauve -y shades, but this is a bit more warm toned. And for some reason, this packaging keeps smudging. I really like the look of this shade over here. That That really speaks to me, so. I can't wait to uh, try this. Everything else that you see lying here, I have tried and I've got a couple of really solid favorites. The Dream Street, it's such a shame that it was discontinued. These, this combination of like the peaches and the teals, just oh, so stunning. Uh, so let me swatch my favorite shades, which is of course going to be these three. These are just absolutely stunning. I love reaching for this palette in the fall time especially. So one of my favorites, but that came very broken, is the Aha uh -huh Honey. I did repress it, but it's still a little flaky, but especially this shade. Like, these shimmers are really nice. It does have a pressed glitter, and I wish this palette had a bit more depth to it. So something a bit deeper than Buzzkill would have uh, had my preference, but this is a lovely yellow palette. Another one I really liked that surprised me was the Smoke Show. I didn't think I'd like a black and gray toned color story, but I ended up loving it, especially because it's got these like more plum-based grays in it. So I really appreciated that. I like the Ooh La La as well. This is a really nice pinky color story, but I feel that, you know, apart from this like super bright shade, there isn't really anything that really speaks to me, even though I think it worked really well on the eye. Main Squeeze was another surprise. I keep this one still in a box because the box is just super cute. I wish the outer packaging was like this. Um, and this is very red toned and I normally don't really like red toned shadows, but this looked really pretty on me. So really glad I got this one. And then from the purpley palettes, I prefer the Lilac You a lot over the It's My Pleasure. And the reason for that is because I find the Lilac Hue a lot, a lot more purple than the It's My Pleasure. Uh, I do really like Bare Minimum in the It's My Pleasure, but this reach, this is just a bit more like on the mauve plummy side, whereas this is more true purple. And I just really like the shimmers in the Lilac Hue a lot. It just suits my skin tone a lot better. Of the two green palettes, I prefer the Mint to be over the Just My Luck. Again, those pastel shades work really well on my cool to neutral undertone. I really appreciate this like gray tone green that's in here. And in here, of course, Mary Jane and the It's My Luck or Just My Luck. And then two of my like bottom <laughs> palettes from this line are the Blue Moon and a Strawberry Shake. I thought some of the mattes in the blue, blue Moon were a little bit lackluster, but I do really like this Billie Jean shade. Let me see where I can swatch it for you. And then in the Strawberry Shake, there were a couple of shades that I liked, but most of it just was a bit underwhelming. Moving on then to my drugstore stuff. There are a couple of really solid favorites in this stack right here. For instance, the BH Cosmetics Love in London palette. This, I tried another BH Cosmetics palette, which we'll see in a minute, that I didn't like as much, but this, not only has great quality, but it also has a really good color story. I love tea, I love London, and I like prestige. These three shades are my favorite in this palette. 
Let's then talk about some other BH stuff. So this was the first BH palette I tried, the Royal Affair, and as I mentioned already, this wasn't my favorite. I do really like Crown in here. That is a really pretty shade. But in terms of the overall color story in this palette, it didn't really wow me. It's very neutral. The same I felt about the Fairy Lights palette by BH. This was limited edition for Christmas last year. I fell in love with this, of course, when I saw it, the blues and the pinks. However, I found that the pinks all looked quite similar once on the eye. The only one that really stands out is that bright pink shade in the middle. Then the Aurora Lights is one I still have to use. Uh, I bought this to have a pop of something fun and shimmery for the lid. It's my very first attempt at using baked shadows as well. Another solid favorite was all the way at the top here. It's the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. I fell in love with my Earth and Ocean. Underwater and also Tundra are two of my favorite shades. These are soft, smooth, buttery, easy to blend. I don't have a lot of Kiko shadows, but I do have this little quad here. This is a Color Fever quad in the shade 101. I quite like NYX's eyeshadow quality, but again, this is not something I reach for a whole lot. The Perfect Filter All of You palette is one that I keep recommending as a great drugstore palette, but not only that, it also dupes the vibes of the ABH subculture. And the NYX, uh, what's this called again, Full Throttle eyeshadow palette in the shade Stunner. I bought it because of that teal and that taupe. I just recently reviewed this over on my blog. This is the LA Girl Hot Hot Heat Aloha Vibes eyeshadow palette. And this thing is massive. This is like the size of one of those Juvia's Place palettes, like the larger one, the Magic or the Masquerade. It's got a really stunning duochrome here and this teal is absolutely gorgeous. I have two of these little Focalore palettes. Po Focalore send these to me. These are the only eyeshadow palettes that I ever received in PR, in case you were wondering. Uh, this is the Smile. And this is The Secret. And these are nice color stories. They're very similar to the ColourPop uh, monochromatic palettes, I have to say. But I like my ColourPop ones better than I do these. Milani then, they discontinued these very shiny numbers, the Most Love Mattes and the Soft and Sultry. Of the two, the Soft and Sultry is definitely my favorite because I just prefer a little bit of shimmer in my palettes. That's just the way I roll. So this I don't reach for a whole lot, but I do really like the quality. And in here, the Soft and Sultry, a lot of people say this is a cool tone palette. It definitely has cool tones, but I don't feel it's very cool tone because this is quite warm leaning and also over here, but this shade here and also this shade, those two, I think, are outstanding eyeshadows. And then we're left with Makeup Revolution. I tried these two larger ones, the Revolution Pro New Neutral and the Revolution uh, Chilled Palette. These are really lovely quality palettes, but they both have pressed glitters. And especially in this green one, the two most interesting shades, which is these two, are pressed glitters, which is just, come on guys. So I do really like the color stories of both of these. It's just that this was very gray toned, which I didn't love. And this just has the pressed glitters that I didn't like. And then we have the Air and Water Sign eyeshadow palettes. These were limited edition back when they did a Zodiac collection a while ago. And these I really like, even though they are all shimmer palettes. Um, this has some really stunning shades. This blue is really nice. This green is really good. Like these, this is some of the best quality that Makeup Revolution has ever done. And then over here we have my four mini palettes. Uh, these two are the OG. So I have the Rose Gold. This is one of my favorite palettes for travel. And I have the Chalk Mint, which of course it has a teal, so I had to have it. And these are the two newer ones that I bought when I did my full face of Makeup Revolution last spring. This is the Mini Tasty Avocado and I have the Turkish Delight. And these I thought were really cute, curated, more unique color stories. And if you've been with me for a while, then you know that I'd love trying out some Essence and Catrice stuff. This uh, Catrice eyeshadow palette, the Queen Couture, this was part of their Royal Party Sister collection last year. It's got a really stunning teal and taupe. <laughs> do, do we sense a theme here? And also in that collection, but from Essence's line, was the Silver Glitter Show. So this is what that looks like. This is a really stunning, cool-toned, leaning palette that I really liked, especially this taupey shade here, and also this rosy shade. This had more shimmers than mattes, but this is the best eyeshadow quality that Essence has done. 
And that Essence and Catrice don't always get it right is shown by the Witch Side Palette by Essence. This came out last spring and I tried this because it was like, ooh, it has these like flaky Huda Beauty-esque kind of shades. I do really like Wicked in here, but most of the shades in here I thought were very lackluster. And then we have the Catrice Pro Next Gen Nudes eyeshadow palette. This came out last spring as well, and this I do like, and it also has some of these flaky shades, as you can see. Um, this is a very good alternative to the Huda Beauty New Nude if you're looking for something affordable. From Essence, I have the Hello New York palette. This is a really pretty cool tone palette. It does have a couple of duochromes here as well. And it's definitely more unique, but Essence discontinued this so quickly. And I think this you can still get from Catrice. This is their crystallized rose quartz palette. Really nice neutral palette, good for travel, I thought. And where I was afraid that this purple wouldn't do much, it actually is really nice for, you know, what Catrice usually does. A great palette from Essence that has been discontinued is the Beautiful palette. This is a nine pen neutral palette that just gives you all the neutrals you could want. And then this has been discontinued too. This is the My Must Haves palette by Essence. You could compile this yourself. And this has some really great quality. Not all of these shades from this line were really good, I remember, but I happened to pick four great ones. And then I have the two Disney collection Catrice pal palettes from uh, the Mini and the Daisy Duck collection that they did this year. The Daisy Duck one is more cool toned and purpley, especially this purple is really pretty here. And this uh, Mini palette is more warm toned and it has this really nice duochrome, like reddish orangey shimmer Say hello to what's still left of my Sleek collection. So here we have Sleek, and as I said, I kept the color stories that I liked. I have the Enchanted Forest, Garden of Eden, On the Horizon, Sunset, Calm Before the Storm, Vintage Romance, Version 2, Mats, Storm, Oh Natural and Oh So Special. This was like my Urban Decay Naked 2 before I had an Urban Decay Naked 2. And then in these ones as well, like there are these one-off shades that I just love. But especially on this side, I feel that these color stories still have something unique to offer. Welcome to my luxury quads. This makeup designer -y quad was actually from a makeup artist brand. I don't know, I very randomly bought this very early on in my makeup journey. I like this taupe shade that it has. And then I've got my two Charlotte Tilburys. I've got the Dolce Vita and the Vintage Vamp. And I really like these little quads around the holidays. And then this Dior little palette has a slide up mirror and then some really stunning shades as well. This cocky shade is really lovely. I bought a couple of Chanel things back when it was announced that Chanel was going to do a new formula and it was supposed to be a lot better. Um, this is the first time they did an all matte palette. This is um, Candeur et Experience. I also have Road Movie and this made me fall back in love with teal eyeshadow because especially the shimmering teal. And then these two quads I think were from like a spring or a fall collection. like. Some of this like transition-y collection that wasn't around for a long time. This, I always mix them up. This is Tissé Fantasy and this is Tissé Dimension and especially this silvery shade and also this greeny shade in this one. These are really pretty shades. But my makeup love affair got started with Dior. This is some of my OG favorite makeup. This is not the kind of color story that I still go for nowadays, especially with that yellow tone gold, but this burgundy and also this cranberry shade in here are still really nice and that used to be like my go-to sort of look. These three quads by Dior and this is called Graphic Lights, which is limited edition all pink. This is Night Butterfly and this is Twilight. In here I really like these navies and blues and this is like a plummy smoky eye, especially that plum shade here. And in here I have a solid favorite in this pinky shade over here. Um, it is an old pink palette, so not that wearable, and it's all shimmery. Next up are my one-offs. So these are all of the palettes that I own, where I only have one palette by that particular brand. One of my more recent buys is the Glam Light Cake palette. I keep this in the packaging because that often is just, just too cute not to keep it around. And I got this because it just seemed like a really nice, fun, colorful palette. Another palette that I haven't tried yet because it's so new to me is the Solomona 
eyeshadow palette by Odin's Eye. I decided to get this because I've heard quite a few people raving about it, and I thought that I could try it. It has a couple of really interesting shades, such as this one and this one over here. Uh, and this is a Swedish indie brand, if I'm not mistaken. And very hot off the press, because I just got this in the other day, is the Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo Harajuku palette. I haven't even taken pictures of this or swatched it. This palette is the Sigma Enchanted palette, and this I uh, tried the other week, like a few weeks ago I started trying this. I really do like a few of the shades in here, but this is not my favorite palette because I find the shimmers to be a bit weak and uh, the mattes in here are very lovely and easy to work with. The Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Storm palette, I haven't uh, played with this one either yet, even though I've had it for months, and that's because I find this color story just speaks vol fall vibes to me, so I want to try this in the fall time. A palette that I do like that got a lot of hype, but that is not my favorite, is the Queen of Hearts by Color Rain. I mainly have it because of this shade right here. I do like these warm tones and those purples, but this shade right here, which is like a rosy, more like rose gold kind of shade that I love, but to be quite honest, this is just not my favorite palette because I feel I have other palettes that give me a very similar idea. And a palette that I feel gives me a similar idea is the Violet Voss Hashtag palette. Now, I remember saying a while ago that I didn't need the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Volume 2 because I feel this has very similar vibes. Got those uh, warm tones with the purples and then those yellow tones as well. A palette I absolutely loved was the OPV Tropical Dreams palette. The Tropical Dreams is like Jeevious plays the tribe on steroids. It also has a couple of these oranges, but then also like these teals and greens and aqua shades. So this is a lovely, lovely palette. This little Stila palette, this is the Eyes Are the Window of the Spirit palette. And this for a very long time, I've said of this that this is one of my favorite neutral palettes. There are only three, maybe four mattes in here, even though this burgundy shade is a bit more, more like a shimmer. Uh, or like a satin, I should say. I do really still like this, like, darker shade. This is great for, like, a gray tone, smoky eye. This Sugar Pill Fun Size palette is incredibly cute, not just because it has a cat, but because it has bright shades and then some more, like, pastel shades. I especially like this shade here called 8-Bit. Um, this palette is one that doesn't swatch very well, but it looks lovely on the eyes. A pastel palette that works stunningly is the Creepy Cute by Strobe Cosmetics, now called Shroud. I would love to try their Arcana palette, but so far I've only tried this. Planchette is quite possibly one of the best, like, lavender shades out there. And then the Michelou Witchcraft palette. This is a lovely grungy color story. I love how you get these reddish shades and those greens. But this shade down here called Magic is, well, it's magic. <laughs> We've got a few more left. This is the Sample Beauty Hydrographic palette. This is a blue-green-purple palette that I like, but I don't love it as much as my Hesina 2, which we'll see in a minute. This does have a couple of really pretty shimmers, though, that aren't super intense or foily, but that do give for, you know, they do make for a bit of variety in this palette. And then we have the V Cosmetics uh, Grimoire palette. This is a really stunning, cool tone palette, but I found that this wasn't, like, the best quality ever, I feel. Um, it, I just I just wanted more from this. It went dark really quickly, but it has a couple of really nice standout shades. This shimmering black is life. Let me see if I can still put it somewhere Maybe here. And then finally in this character uh, category is the LA Splash Classic Horror Palette. I love this packaging. Look at the zombie ladies. I just, I love it. But that's not why you should buy this palette. This palette is a rainbow, but it's not too bright. The shades look really bright in the pan, but they have a little bit more depth to them, and it has this really stunning sky blue, periwinkle kind of shade. Moving on then to indie makeup. The Slush Palette by September Rose. I love this for a colorful palette. Um, it is a rainbow palette, but then with more like pastels and like neons into like more jewel tones. And then we have the Slush 2 in here too. And this is a matte rainbow palette that I also really like. Again, it has that stunning like bright blue shade that I love so much. One of my other favorite rainbow palettes is the 
certify Tropical Wonders. So that would be this one. And I also have the Affinity 2 by Certify. And this Tropical Wonders palette is absolutely stunning. I like Toucan, even though I'd like it to be more true orange, you could say. But I feel that in terms of like a full color spectrum of the rainbow, this nothing currently still beats it. And this is a really nice blue-green eyeshadow palette. More rainbow and blue-green then from Ace Beauté. I have the Slice of Paradise here, and I also have their Oceanic palette. And these two palettes are nice, but I definitely prefer the Oceanic over the Slice of Paradise. The Slice of Paradise, I had a bit of an issue with some of the textures in here. They didn't really stay put on my eyes very well, but I love Fruit Dove in here. And in the Oceanic palette, I of course love the teal, but I also like some of these brighter shades that it has. This is just a really, this is just a really good range of blue-greens, I feel. This is definitely my favorite blue-green palette that I have. Also down here, but I'm not sure if you could actually see them, were my little Dose of Colors palettes. I love these little five pan palettes, even though they are all matte, and that is usually not my favorite thing, but I really like these because they make for one very simple look. I've got the Pretty Cool, which has a really nice like green toned, toned taupey shade, which I love. This is the Blushing Berries, of which I like these two shades here the best. Um, they are really stunning, and I love these especially in like the fall winter time when I just want to do something very easy and this is Marvelous Mauves and then what I will do is I'll just make a very basic look with this and then I slap a Stila Glitter on Glow or a Colourpop Super Shock all over the lid and I'm done. Down here we have my Menagerie Cosmetics. This is the Dragon Child and this is the Feral palette. These two have stunning, very unique color stories, I have to say. Um, the Feral is probably my favorite over these, like of these two, but I would love to try some more Menagerie, especially this Wolf Link shade here. And some of the purples in this Dragon Child palette are just absolutely gorgeous. And then I have my Blush Tribe palettes here. Sadly, Blush Tribe as a brand has been discontinued, which is such a shame. The Asina 2 is probably one of my favorite all-time palettes. It's got blue, greens, and purples. This is a color story of my dreams. So it was a bit sad to find that when the Layla 2 came out that it was very samey samey. I wish there was more variety in this palette. It is a very pretty all green palette though, and especially some of these bright shades down here. Let's talk about Nabla for a minute. Nabla is definitely a brand that I have fallen in love with a lot. Their palettes more so than their singles, I have to say. This is the Soul Blooming. This is a really pretty like spring palette. It has this like pink periwinkle fall, uh, lavender shade, but it also has quite a few warm tones, which I do like. And then this is the Secret palette, which is also really stunning, but it was a bit more neutral. Uh, once I got home then, what it looked like in the pictures online. I definitely would have liked this to be a little bit more unique, but this shade here called Rosemary is... And then these three cutie palettes are my most recent Nabla um, <laughs> addition, you could say. We have the Coral, we have the Platinum, and we've got the Wild Berry. And in the Coral, you get these two really pretty shades. I love this pinky shade here. Uh, in here, in the Platinum, I of course love that taupe that, you know, what else is new? The Alchemy 2.0 shade into Wild Berry. Of these three, of course, the Platinum is my favorite because I just prefer cooler undertones. So this brand, I'm never sure whether to still categorize them as being indie or not. The Venus XL is quite possibly one of the best berry palettes on the market. I call this the Mono Renaissance on steroids. <laughs> uh, and especially this shade here, Botticelli. It feels super dry to the touch, but it is such a stunning dark plum. And then the Venus XL2 is a more cool toned color story, I have to say. It's got a bit of warmth, but this is quite light, so this works best if you have a fair and cool undertone for sure. And then of these three smaller ones, I started the journey with the Immortalis because I like this so much. I got the other two. Echo and Hail in here are stunning. This is, of course, very cool toned. And then the Venus 3 I bought because it has those purples. It, I wasn't sure with those warm tones whether it would go, but when I tried it, I was pretty amazed. And the same goes for the Prelude, which of course I bought because it has teals. What else is new with me? So the, these two shades here and also... So let me swatch those here. And then finally, 
Meld Cosmetics. My Meld journey, it didn't start with the Murate, but this is what got my Meld love train started. Um, the Murate is such a unique palette. I love this navy shade called Katrina. This is such a unique color story. I just love how these shades play together. It's super grungy. So sad it was discontinued. Um, I bought the Gemini because I love the Merte so much. This is, of course, a ballot that got a lot of hype a few years ago. The greens, but in combination with the browns. That's where this palette lives for me. And then we have the Smoke Sessions, which I kind of bought because the Gemini doesn't have a lot of shimmer options. And I felt that some of the shimmers in here would go lovely with the Gemini. So these are all of my Melt stacks. This is definitely an area that I've expanded as well. My Blueprint stack came shattered, then I dropped it again, like repressed it, dropped it again, and I've lost the complete shade. So that's a bit of a mess. But again, also in here, that like navy shimmer is just where, you know, I love a navy shimmer. <laughs> Um, and then in the gunmetal stack, I really like this shade called Industrial. This is really pretty. And then in the rust stack, I love this baby poop brown shade called Rubbish. And then we've got the She's in Party stack, which has, of course, like these two have been t turned into palettes now, which is why I don't own the palettes, because I already have these stacks, so no need for me to double it up. And then real quickly, be before we move on to like my regular high-end stuff, Jeffree Star, I do own a few things by his, from his brand and I'm going to hang on to these because I do really enjoy the quality of his products. It's just something I will, after this video, I will not be showing any Jeffree Star anymore on my channel. I have the Jawbreaker, which I think is a really stunning, like, colorful palette. And this is the Mini Breaker, and I bought the two of them because I felt the Jawbreaker was missing this matte purple. So I really would have loved this matte purple to replace that brown in here. In here, I really like this cherry shade. That's really pretty, and also this shimmering bubblegum pink shade. Then the Blue Blood was the first Jeffree Star palette I ever bought. This is a palette that, of course, I love because of its color story. It has the neutrals I would like, and it has the blue tones I would like. I like how you get gray toned, green toned, and like true blue shades. And then the two most recent palettes I got are the Cremated and the Bloodlust, which both of which I've still yet to play with. I haven't put these on my eyes yet. The swatches look very, very promising though. Say hello to my little Urban Decay family. And what I've got going on in the middle are my Vice palettes. Vice one, two, three, four. This is what these four palettes look like. This is the Vice one, Vice two, Vice three, Vice four. These are of course quite old palettes. Um, I, I still reach for these from time to time because they have some very singular, unique shades. In here, this is the Vice one. I really like Blitz and the shade Vice. And in the two, I really like Shell Shock, Voodoo and Betrayal. I also quite like Prank in here. In the Vice 3 and the Vice 4, in here I really like Sonic and I also really like Dragon. In here I like Arctic and Flame. So that's the Vice 4 and that's the Vice 3. So yeah, these are just lovely palettes till this day. I can get rid of these because they just have such unique colors. All right, and this next little setup is all of my like limited edition, older stuff that's been discontinued or like one-offs that aren't a naked palette or a vice palette, you could say. I have the 15th anniversary palette, which is super shiny. So let me uh, <laughs> help you there. This is a really, again, I keep this around because it has four really pretty like tealy, turquoisey, purpley shades. The full spectrum, I believe I was like the only person on the planet who liked this, but this is a really pretty, like this was my first rainbow palette and I love how you get like the jewel tones, then the brighter shades and the lighter shades. And then the Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass palette, I bought this because again, it has some unique shades. We've got a teal, I'm not gonna swatch it for you, I'm gonna hold back. I believe this palette is laid out with like one row of shades for each character from the movie. So I quickly tried to give this a wipe down. This is the Heavy Metals. This was a palette that was limited edition for the Christmas time. You get a full like colorful row with like jewel tones and then the neutral ones. This is an all shimmer palette. The Wired palette which came out this year is one that I have because I didn't own the Electric and this has a lot of similar shades. This shade for fluorescent was a bit of a disappointment, I have to say. I would have liked that to be better, but if I wanna go for something super bright and neon, 
I now have something that can do that. This is the After Dark palette, which is not a palette that a lot of people used to own. This was limited edition for a hot minute and then it disappeared. This was promoted as the um, sister palette to the Electric, with that being neons, this being jewel tones. It's got lounge and it also has fringe. Fringe was also in the Electric and that's the only shade from Electric that I liked. The Back Talk palette was another one that not a lot of people loved. What I have always said, and what I still do when I reach for this, is that I put the face products into the eyeshadow palette. The Born to Run, I think this looks like a more muted version of a Vice palette, which is why I didn't love this as much as everybody else. And then these two very much discontinued palettes, this is the Lulux Shadow Box and the Ultimate Basics. I keep this one around for the packaging not gonna lie <laughs> and I keep this one around because it's they seem to be redoing some of these shades in their newer palettes so I can't like I sort of keep this around to compare it to new stuff this is an old matte palette and the quality of this is really nice I just don't really reach for a lot of my old matte palettes and then we get the naked palette family I still have all of them let's just start with the naked basics one and two I still like these um, like my Dose of Colors palettes, these are the kind of palettes I pull in if I just want to do a basic eye. And then we have the standard size Naked palettes left. So Naked 1, one of my first high-end palettes for sure. This looks barely used because I don't like it as much as everybody else does. Um, but I do li really like these four shades here, um, but this is not something I reach for a lot. The Naked Reloaded was much more up my street. This has um, some more cooler tones and some more reddish shades so that has you know that that's just my favorite and Dreamweaver this is a really stunning more cool tone dark brown favorites territory naked 2 one of my all-time favorite palettes till this day it was discontinued and I bought a backup because I love it that much and naked 3 also favorites territory for sure I love trick and mugshot in here for sure the Naked Smoky was not my favorite, um, but I definitely played around with this a lot last year and I fell in love with it. And then we get the colorful Naked palettes, you could say. The Naked Heat, I do like this for a warm tone palette be precisely because it's more reddish than orange toned. The Cherry is perhaps my least used Naked palette and that's because I feel I have other berry palettes that I like better. Naked Honey, the yellow tones, man. I do have to say though that with like some other palettes that I have, if you put your fingers over this. It's a bit boring, but yeah, those yellows make it a bit more fun. And mustardy browns, It's that's my cup of tea. And then the newest Urban Decay and Naked Ultraviolet. I, I've only done one or two looks with it so far, so I need to play with it a bit more, but I do appreciate the selection that's in here. I would have liked an extra matte purple though. And last but not least, we are doing what I would like to call my Sephora brands. I know not every every brand that's here is technically a Sephora brand. However, in my brain, that that's how they work. First things first, luxury stuff. So I've got some Viseart down here. This is the Sultry Muse. This is a palette I don't use a lot precisely because it's all shimmer and these shimmers are more satin than like truly foily metallics, but I do still really like till this day, this rose gold shade. And then most recently, because I wanted to try their matte formula, I got the Petite Pro, Pro 3. So this is a really stunning palette. I love that it has that pop of green. And then the Natasha Denona Lila and Gold palette. I love both of these, but I like my gold a bit better than the Lila. And that's because this I find more unique because these shimmers all have different textures. In here, I really like Dragon Bite, which is like a reddish, browny, purpley, kind of murky shade. Um, it's, it's a really, really, really different one. Pat McGrath, I wanted to try this, so I got one of her little quads that she did for Christmas. This is the Blitz Astral Quad in the Nocturnal Nirvana. It's got a stunning purple and this green, oh, 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 oh. These are so, so stunning. And that quad made me want to buy another one of her palettes. And I was umming and ahhing between a couple of the smaller things and the bigger things, and then the Divine Rose 2 came out. I was like, yup, I need that. This is Sexoterrestrial. Really quickly, my Kat Von D or KVD stuff, uh, that's how it's branded now. I can't get rid of the Monarch because I just love the packaging so much. And again, this has a stunning rose gold, but I don't really reach for this anymore. And the same goes for the Shade and Light Eye. I already mentioned how I'm not a huge fan of all matte palettes and 
this looks barely used because it is. Then a brand that nobody really talks about anymore, but Lorac. They used to be sold at Sephora, but then they were only available at Ulta. The Pro One, I've mentioned many times that I find it a bit too dark, so for me the palette goes onto here. The Two definitely has my preference because I like the shimmers, especially Chrome and Jade in here. I like Navy Plum and Nectar too. But the Low Rock Pro 3 it definitely holds my heart. This is my one of my all-time favorite palettes, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. Rose Bronze I love. I like Light Pewter and also Medallion I like. Oh, and the reason why I like this so much is but because I'm quite fair. This was the first neutral palette that allowed me to use every single shade. And because I like the Pro 4 so, uh, 3 so much, I did decide to finally buy the Pro 4. I haven't used this yet but it's got lovely rosy tones. Let's talk Too Faced then. Too Faced is a brand that I still like the quality of. I like the palettes that I have. That new pumpkin spice palette does not look like something I would like to buy though. Uh, the original chocolate bar is my least favorite because it's a bit dark. I don't feel I get enough lit shades in this palette. The semi-sweet was much more up my street. I'm so sad this has been discontinued. I really liked rum raisin in here and also nougat. Those were two of my favorites in this palette. But the chocolate bonbons definitely took the cake. Again, discontinued, but Cafe Au Lait and Earl Grey are two of my favorite shades in here. This is a stunning cool tone palette. But then the palette that beat everything else off the throne for me when it comes to Too Faced is it's the white chocolate bar, which nobody liked. Sugared Raisin I really like, and I also really like Indulge. I like these peachy shades, I love how you get a pop of something, and then these like neutrally shades work really well on my complexion. Then the Sweet Peach, I did really like this palette, but again, like with the Lorac, I feel like this part is perhaps a little bit too dark, so I would not be using that a lot. Luscious is really pretty, and I also really like Georgia in here. This has some really pretty looks, but this is a spring palette for me, and in the spring, I'm usually testing out lots of other eyeshadows, so I haven't used this in a while. And then the Gingerbread Spice, the first one that came out. I really like this, especially for these two shades and Hot Toddy. And then from the Just Peachy Mattes, I just mentioned that I don't really like matte palettes, but this one I do like because you get a bit more variety in this. Next up is Zoeva. You're probably wondering, Micah, Zoeva a Sephora brand? Yes, Zoeva is avail available from Sephora if you live in Europe. My most recent Zoeva palette is this little guy. This is the Precious palette. I used this one so far and I really like this exquisite shade. It is more of like a plummy rose gold. It's very unique. And that goes for all of these eyeshadow palettes by Zoeva, save for like one. I feel that the opulence has a bit of a dud shade with that blue and this color story is a bit samey samey, which is not my favorite, which is why this is currently on the chopping block. Another one on the chopping block is the Rose Golden, because this is also a bit bland and a bit samey samey. Then the Urban Matte. This is a nice matte palette because you get your neutrals, you get warm tones, you get cool tones. Works really well for that reason. A bland palette by Zoeva that I love, the On Taupe. You've heard me rave about this for a long time, especially these two shades over here, uh, Sp Spun Pearl and Shears and Voiles. They are duochromes. And nobody talks about them. This is a more recent Zoeva palette. This is the Heritage palette, and this has stunning berries, a plum, some neutrally shades, and then this taupe. Like, it's like a bronzy, taupey, goldy shade. Really, like a cool toned gold, if that makes sense. The OG eyeshadow palettes by Zoeva, I think most people are familiar with, are their chocolate bars. This is the Cocoa Blend. This got a lot of hype when it was first released on YouTube. Um, we have that cranberry shade in the middle, which is lovely um, and also subtle blend. And you do get a couple of good mattes in here too. Caramel Melange, six mattes, four shimmers. Oops, liquid center. This, this, this shade, huh. But my favorite of their chocolate bars is the Blanc Fusion. And to my horror, you can no longer buy this as a single palette. You have to buy it as a set shame because this shade here and also the fact that you get a whole row of like matte neutrals at the bottom these yellow tones this is like urban decay's naked honey but then more neutral and more fair girl friendly you could say spice of life was released a bit later this is a little again a, a bit more warm tone but it's got some cool toneness here especially uh this needs a bit of building up i believe it's called unlike any other and then we have four palettes left that I think are more unique 
to Zoeva's line. We have the Premier Collection. This is warm tones with some mauves, and then you get these greeny, goldy shades, and then this shade here, which is a bit like uh, ColourPop's Glass Bull, which is really pretty. The Melody by Zoeva is a really stunning palette. It's got a couple of really pretty duochromes, namely this one. Oh, this, is, this is such a stunning palette. I believe either this or the IC, I believe were limited edition. I'm not sure if you can still get these. The Eclectic Eyes palette is really pretty too, especially these two shades here. These are really soft, really smooth, very buttery, just so, so yummy. Look at, look at that go. And then lastly, we have the IC. Again, some stunning duochromes in here. And this is a surprisingly cool tone palette and you get a couple of stunning jewel tones. This like blue-brown kind of goodness. Um, the balm, stunning packaging. Do I reach for these palettes a whole lot? Not by any means, but they do some really cool things, I think. Till this day, the balm is very, very much underrated. The new Tude is my go-to palette for a like vintage smoky eye because it's got these two burgundies over here. The new Dude, I always recommend if people find the Naked 3 too ashy, this is a bit more warm toned and it's darker. So if the Naked 3 is one that look, looks like something you might like, but you're like, huh? Maybe this one, This try this one. The Nude Beach is a warm toned palette, but this is much more like, it's just much better for a fair-skinned gal, I find, because it's got those, like, peachy, rosy tones, and then this is a bit more bronzy brown. And then these three meat matte palettes have to be some of my favorite matte palettes. Why? So this is what these three palettes look like, and each one of them has a specific color story. This is, like, warm tones, but then with, like, some blues. This is very warm and a bit dark for me. Like, these four shades all pull the same on me. But this one especially, I feel you can very much customize the shade because you got that white. So you can very easily tone down some of the shades that are in here. So I feel that with this and the Just Peachy, Peachy Mattes, I pretty much have all the mattes that I could possibly want. Huda Beauty is up next. My first Huda Beauty purchase was the Desert Dusk. I love this palette. And why do I love this palette so much? Because you do get some neutrals over here and then you get those really warm tones with the purples. I just love how that's laid out and how it all plays together. My two favorite shades in here are probably Cashmere, Blood Moon, and oh well, why not swatch Turkish Delight as well. I just recently got the Mercury Retrograde and I just finished trying it and oh my, I love the textures that you get in here. This peachy shimmer is really nice and also this nebulous shade. And I love how everything, like the neutrals in here are quite fair. It doesn't go too, too deep and then you get these stunning, just foily kind of shades with, as you can see, lots and lots of sparkle, but this is not a pressed glitter. I don't know how they did it. And then I've got a lot of these mini palettes by Huda Beauty. The Electric Obsessions is a really pretty, like, cute, small, rainbow palette that has a teal. So, of course, I had to have it. And then we have the Amethyst Obsessions. We have the Sapphire Obsessions. And we have the Emerald Obsessions. And these three I really like. I just wish that these were perhaps a little bit more true to their color stories, especially the Amethyst one. I felt wasn't as purple as it could have been. Uh, the Sapphire Obsessions, it has a few dud shades, namely that like limey green that's in there. The green one is probably the best one out of the three. From the neons, I only bought the neon orange because I felt this had the pinks, as well as that highlighter yellow shade from the neon green, and then those oranges. This is such a fun palette for the summertime. And then these two nude ones, I got the light and the rich. The reason why I got the light and the rich is because I felt the light was going to be a little bit too limiting for my tastes, and the medium one was quite orange, whereas the rich one is a bit more berry toned. And I never bought the new nude because it had pressed glitters and a cream. And I felt that this combined gave me a similar vibe. Moving on then to Tarte. And Tarte is a brand that, again, I haven't tried a lot from because not, not all of their palettes appeal to me. And, you know, in terms of like super basic palettes, it gets no, no more basic than the Tartlet in Bloom. And this, together with some of my Naked and Anastasia and Too Faced palettes, like, this is such a perfect, like, everyday palette. If I don't know what to do, I'll reach for this, and I know I've got to look. The same goes for the Toasted. When warm tones were all the rage, I felt that this is the most wearable 
warm toned palette in my collection. But then Tarte did try to do more interesting things. This is the High Tides and Good Vibes palette, and this is probably going to blind you, I'm terribly sorry. Um, but this has those pressed glitters, and even though I don't love pressed glitters, these are good pressed glitters. <laughs> and then you get those neutrals, and that pink, and then these blues, and mint greens. This is so, so pretty. And last but not least, this is the last little family I need to show you and then we're done. This is my Anastasia family and I got the Mini Norvina Volume 3 earlier this year because I like the color story of it and I like the box, which is why I'm keeping it in there. This is really pretty, but I didn't know this came with pressed glitters. It was nowhere on any of the promo material, you could say. Um, but I do like these reds combined with the blue. They make for stunning purples. It works well, it is very unique. I just wish I had known it had a pressed glitter because then I wouldn't have bought it. The Modern Renaissance that everybody raved about, I understand why people like this so much, but for me, where it's at are the berry tones. This palette is the reason why I own the Venus XL by Lime Crime. Red Ochre and Venetian Red, I love these two shades in the fall time so, so much. I love doing a berry smoky eye with this and it's just gorgeous. I reach for my subculture a lot more. I know that everybody liked this palette. I got mine later, so the formula was fine. Axis in here is the teal of my dreams. It is the most difficult work shade to work with in this entire palette for sure, uh, but I love this and I love pairing it with duochromes and multichromes from indie brands. The prism, which was intended to be paired with the uh, subculture, of course, I really like Dimension and Throne in here, and uh, this is still for sale actually on the UK website by Anastasia. So if you go to your official UK website, it's still on there. And then what got my love train with Anastasia started is the Norvina palette. I already owned the Modern Renaissance, but I hadn't bought the other ones because I was like, meh. And then this came out, full row of mattes, full row of shimmers, this rose gold shade, and also soul and volatile. This is a bit more cool toned, which is why I like it. And this has really nice quality. Soft Glam then, also stunning. More rosy tone than the Modern Renaissance, which I like. But it does have a couple of like duplicate shades compared to the Modern Renaissance, which is a bit of a shame. But Rose Pink and Sultry I like. Dusty Rose, Sienna, Rustic, Mulberry. Let me swatch Mulberry for you because that's stunning. Like this reddish brown. And then we got the Sultry, and I love the Sultry palette because it is a bit more cool toned. It's just not as cool toned as I'd like it to be because you get some warmth here, but Cyborg and also Cinder are standout shades for sure. And then the Riviera, which a lot of people have been dis uh, like decluttering from their collections, but I could not get rid of this because I really like Mediterranean and Seaside. These are two very pretty, very unique shades, and then you get those brights. Why would you want to get rid of this? Like, these shades are stunning. And then last but not least, the Jackie Ina palette. I held off of getting this because I wasn't sure it was for me. I've tried it and I love it. Lithuation, Sponsored, and Shookington. There we have it. Those were all of the eyeshadow palettes in my eyeshadow palette collection at this moment. So I really hope you enjoyed watching it. I do have to say that this eyeshadow palette collection is a working process. Like I tend to declutter uh, my collection like every 12 to 18 months, whenever I feel there is just too much that I no longer hold an interest in, then I tend to go through everything and then usually I film that too. I do these like collection videos like once a year just to give you an update of where things stand. As we speak, there's palettes on my wish list. There's a few palettes still making its way to me. So this is definitely an ever changing situation, you could say. So for now, I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week and definitely eyeshadow palette related content is a regular subject here on this channel. So I hope you'd like to stay tuned for that and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.